Digital Eyes were on the Fed today, but the Bank of Canada also had some news. It released minutes from its March 6 meeting. Our guest says the BOC summary of deliberations indicates that the bank is inching closer to rate cuts, but is unsure of the timing. We're joined by James Marple, Managing Director and Senior Economist at TD Bank Group. James, give us your one or two big takeaways from these minutes, if you would. Okay, well, I mean, the first, the, the headline really is that as long as the economic outlook continues as they expect, they do think they will be cutting rates uh, this year. Uh, but there was some disagreement among uh, among the governing council on uh, when and exactly what those conditions would be. They are still very much focused on inflation and concerned about its persistence, not yet uh, totally convinced that it, you know, it, it, it will get to their target, uh, you know, early enough for them to say for sure that they are going to cut interest rates. Do you think that they are anxious to avoid cutting rates before the Fed does, in the sense that it could push down our currency and stimulate inflation in Canada? Uh, I, I mean, I think they, they definitely look at the exchange rate. I, I, you know, we do tend to see the Bank of Canada follow rather than than lead the Fed. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I think there would be scope to cut before the Fed in the sense that the U.S. economy is performing a lot better than the Canadian economy has been over the last year, and that's true whether you look at GDP or uh, unemployment. But but I think to your point, they would want to make sure that uh, that inflation really is uh, moving uh, toward their target before they cut rates. Uh, so you know, I, I don't think that they will be uh, limited if the Fed, if the if the U.S. data continues to uh, be more resilient than Canada's. I think they could cut before the Fed. And the bank um, apparently these minutes stress the problem of shelter inflation, both the costs of home ownership and the, I presume the cost of rent. Sure. Well, the other thing is mortgage interest costs, which are impacted by yeah. monetary policy and, and create a little bit of an issue because as they raise rates, they raise a component of inflation. Uh, so uh, there has been some analysis to suggest maybe they want to look through that if it's not uh, signaling sort of broad based price pressures. Uh, they, so they spent a bit of time talking about that. I think what they the message there was that as long as they're seeing inflation in uh, shelter costs more broadly continue to look elevated and as you mentioned show up in rents and in in uh, new home prices etc that they are that they are not going to look through it mm -hmm. but at least in terms of uh, discounting a little bit the direct impact of their policy on the inflation rate uh, they may may be willing to to sort of look through that and and again are going to look at just broad price measures that the percent of the basket that's rising uh, more than two percent and wage growth and uh, productivity and all of those, uh, including and expectations and all of those measures that would convince them that inflation is moving toward their target. You guys have a great line in your analysis that the Bank of Canada is kind of white knuckling us. The economy is, is sputtering, but they are sticking with their, their interest rates. They're not um, cutting. Well, I mean, again, they, that is is true. That the data certainly has shown a slowing, um, really more of an economic growth and an unemployment rate that's moving higher. Uh, but uh, the bank is giving little signals that they would cut interest rates. That's true even uh, in this statement. I mean, the one thing that we got in the minutes or the, these uh, the details today was that they they will they do expect to cut interest rates this year. But again, they just need to be convinced that inflation is continuing to cooperate. What about, and now your take is that we should, or we, sorry, we, we, you don't want to see this, but we're likely to see the U.S. and Canadian economies moving into job losses in the second half of the year? Well, I think that's more likely. Um, I mean, I th in Canada, I think we'll see, we are already seeing a slowing below the rate of population growth. Oh, okay. So different factors in, in, in both, but uh, we will see the unemployment rate move higher. Uh, that, that doesn't necessarily signal that you need job losses. Obviously, we have such a strong pace of labor force growth in Canada that, uh, that it, it's hard to see outright losses, although I think in Canada's case, the slowing in the economy suggests that could happen by the second half of this year. In the U.S., we have a more modest increase in the unemployment rate, but, uh, but again, very don't have much in the way of job losses, and that just reflects the fact that labor demand is, is in terms of job openings are still very elevated. Uh, but we do still anticipate the rate of growth to slow uh, below the rate of labor force growth and that unemployment rate to move higher.
And will it matter that much if they cut interest rates um, in the sense, is it likely to stimulate a, a surge in the housing market, for example? Well, you have seen the housing market very uh, responsive to changes in interest rates. Even small uh, movement in mortgage rates have, have resulted in a, in a rebound in home sales. And obviously, having a, a dynamic where population growth is very much beyond the rate of, uh, of, of new ho housing construction. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot there to support demand and support demand in a way that would push up prices and, and worsen affordability. So uh, I, I think, you know, they are conscious of that. And, and, you know, unless there's a real supply side response, uh, that is an issue for their, for their forecast over the medium term. And can you remind us, Canadian consumers, is there, I know their savings rates pretty high right now, but have they been cutting back on spending? We have definitely started to see signs of uh, slowing in spending. And if you look, actually, Statistics Canada does have data by quintile. And we have seen over the most recent quarters that the data is available, uh, reductions in spending for all but the highest income quintile. So certainly uh, signs that the weight of higher interest rates and uh, debt service costs are, are reducing spending, yes. And just just finally, where where are we at in, in the cycle? I mean, do you, are we still in a in a steady slowing mode for the economy? Not a recession, but are we gradually slowing our output? Well, that that remains our base case, and certainly the uh, the the movement down in inflation that we've seen, the cooperation we've had there, is consistent with that. If we can continue to see that occur you know, on a relatively gradual basis, but moving in the right direction, uh, then I think we will uh, see the central banks start to cut interest rates, likely at the midpoint of this year. And that reduces some of the downside risk in terms of, you know, we've seen really the stresses on households that have come as a result of higher rates. If they can start to move lower, uh, I think all of that is supportive of a soft landing narrative that we don't necessarily have to see a recession in order to move back to sort of a, a state of low and steady inflation and uh, a more normal interest rate environment.